All right, that is now recording, Di. Okay. Uh, evening, members. Uh, we're all... Of this is somewhat awkward processes at times. Uh, to the gallery, even though we're all scattered in various places, uh, good evening. My name's Don Donaldson. I'm the presiding member of the panel and all the other members of the panel are also online. And they are David Cook, Council of Robin Pierce, Rob Gaghetti and Ruan Ferrer. Okay, so there are no apologies. Um, we, we do have, an, and we also have Darren Starr here with me at the Prospect Office, as well as Scott and Susan as officers who have prepared the reports available as well. Okay, now particularly for Peter and John and Ben and Brian, I don't know how involved you have been in past panels, but um, what we'll do is we'll deal with each application at a t one at a time and where appropriate, we will actually ask you to outline as representatives your concerns. We have got your written comments. Uh, we've seen the sites as well that, uh, that we're dealing with. So we are familiar with your concerns. So please take up to the five minutes to outline your main considerations and your main concerns. Uh, after which the applicant will likewise have an opportunity of responding to the panel in terms of those concerns and how they uh, believe their proposal uh, fits in with those concerns or not. Okay. We may have also questions of you uh, through the meeting, either of yourselves or the applicant and as well as we might seek clarification from staff. Please be aware that as a panel, um, our terms of reference, if I can put it that way, are very limited. We are here to determine applications in light of the development plan. Take into account your concerns, uh, but they need to be concerns that we can find a basis to in terms of the development plan and what and the zoning provisions and the like and the policy considerations. Okay, so we are not a body like the council that is here to represent its community. We are a specialist body that is called upon by council to actually determine applications in particular in light of particular criteria and uh, considerations. So if we could start the meeting now and before I do so I'd just like to acknowledge, although we're all at different locations, that the panel acknowledges that we are on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains region and we pay our respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationships with the land and we acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. Okay. Now, we have no people on, on leave or no apologies. We have confirmation of two minute, uh, minutes of two meetings, the 16th of March and the 27th of March. Could I have a mover and a seconder if everyone's comfortable with those? I'm happy to move that, John. David, thank you. Is there a seconder? I'm happy to second that. Rowan. Thanks, Rowan. Okay, I'll put that motion. Those in favour? Oh, sorry, is there anyone contrary to those views? If not, I'll accept it as being carried by consensus. Thank you. Now, <laughs> first item 6.1, it's at uh, 2 to 8 Cougar Avenue Prospect. It's for two joint transportable classrooms, associated veranda, deck and ramp, and a modification to a fence. Now, we have representations, and on board we have Peter Dubois, and the respondents, Tim Ross and Peter Charleston. Okay, so we'll, first of all, we'll go to Peter. Peter, are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, and we can see you. Well, I can see you. Okay, Peter, you have five minutes in which to outline your your uh, concerns. Okay. Um, well, first of all, we'd like to just say that we realise that there's something that's always going to happen at the school. It's only inevitable that it will expand. We're not here to block expansion. We're just here to try and get a better community consultation so it's right for not just for the school but for the the whole community or particularly the residents around the school. Um, our, our concern is 
basically at the moment we've got this uh, big green space on uh, on the corner of Orville and Mora Avenues, and it also is visible, particularly from uh, Kunga Avenue as well. Um, we're placing the two new buildings there. It's going to visually impact on that green space. Um, and for instance, if you're driving up the road, you're going to not have that parkland type effect. It's going to be blocked off by these uh, buildings. We feel that they could be relocated to another position. Um, and other issues that we've got is we don't believe that the landscaping issues have really been addressed. Um, a reply that we've had back from the applicant, I think it was actually through reply of Tim in an email when we put in our concerns is that um, it says um, hesitant regarding too much planting around transportables as we see them as a temporary fix with the school ideal situation to extend or renovate, which, okay, fair enough. But there is no mention of the building being temporary in the proposal. Therefore, it should be taken to be permanent and requiring the same standard as any other building in the zone, um, which we don't believe it does. It's not a particularly attractive building. It's, it's effectively an ACCO hut, which you would see on building sites, mine sites, etc. I know they're used in other educational facilities around the area, but um, I don't believe that in any way that they're going to be just a temporary fix. They, they'll, they'll be there for good. There's no such thing as temporary. Um, they haven't applied for a temporary um, application and I don't really believe there is such a thing as a temporary application. So I think that the buildings need to be more attractive and more, more in fitting with the surrounds that they're going to be placed in, which uh, re refer back to residential zone PDCs five, six and seven, where the scale character and design should be sensitive to and complementary to the local character, which they are obviously not. Um, we also had no indication of what the colour of these buildings are going to be. However, in the application, the, the snippet that of the picture that was shown was like a wheat type colour, exactly like what an echo hut type thing would be at a building site or a mine site. Um, we think it could be a darker colour surrounded in heavy, a lot heavier uh, landscaping to disguise them. And we also believe that if they were moved to another position um, in that yard, particularly I would propose more down towards number 19 Bourville Street, which is the small property that's basically in the school grounds, which will one day probably be acquired by the school and they could do whatever they want there. And that way, this whole visual impact of that corner being blocked um, it just wouldn't be there. And they'd still have the same amenity um, for their educational facilities, uh, you wouldn't have the, the blocked off area on that corner impacting on three streets like the proposal has. So like I said, we're well aware that it's going to happen. We just would like to have some input, um, have some feedback and try and get this right for everyone in the, in the design, the colours, the landscaping and the position of the buildings. Um, and uh, yeah, because is, it is a pretty sensitive area. It's a very historical area. Um, at the moment, that green space has been there for decades. And, you know, once you lose it, you don't get it back because I don't believe there's anything um, that's really that temporary about it. We also have a, an, a question about why there's a five metre ramp that comes straight off the front of the um, the transportables, I realise that could be to do with um, disabled um, abilities, but why it can't be run parallel with the actual building is sort of beyond me, because that seems to you know, really jut out into the, the playground area as well. So I think that's another slight issue that needs to be considered. Um, we appreciate that Tim's reply to saying that 
landscaping, they could replace a tree that died many years ago. Virtually, it's in front of our house. And that'd be great. We really appreciate that, that effort. Um, we do think that parking is also another a very big issue. Um, Peter, you've, you've sort of uh, been speaking for about five minutes or just over. Right. Do you want to just summarise very quickly the last couple of sentences, what just rounding off your uh, concerns? Yeah, well, we'd just like to have less visual impact on the whole area by repositioning the building to a more suitable spot, have it um, have some input into it, have some better landscaping to disguise it um, from the surrounding area so it fits in with our area like we've all got to live with it and we'll be living with it for a hell of a long time. So we just like to get it right for everyone, not just the school. Thanks, Peter. Okay, Peter, if you stay there, members, yep. any questions or comments or points you want to clarify with Peter? Uh, through the chair, I've got one question, if I may. Yep, sure. Rob, go ahead. Uh, yep, thank you. Um, uh, Peter, you mentioned uh, the possibility of relocating the building to an area towards number 19, which yep. is owned by, I believe, the school, and I believe it's a dwelling, from my understanding. Are you suggesting what locating it alongside number 19? Yes, that's or, right, yeah. So that would still be visible from Borville, Borville Street, though, wouldn't it? It would be, but it wouldn't block the corner off, like I said. Okay. We're at the position at the moment, it's gonna visually impact on three streets. If it was yep. just down there, it would have an impact on Borville Street. But driving from any direction on Borville Street or Mura or Punga, it wouldn't have that blocking off type of effect that the current position that they've proposed would have. Okay, thank you. I realise it's not coming right out to the corner, but it's still going to have you know, a, a bulkiness to it to an extent. Are there any other questions of Peter? No. Nope. Okay, thank you, Peter. Right, um, can we move now to Tim and Peter in terms of responding to the rep? Yeah, um, Peter, do you want to go first and I'll cover anything? Yeah, okay. Um, now, I there's two of you, but you still only have five minutes, so spend your time wisely. Okay, I'll, I'll speak quickly. Um, just a couple of things. The um, in terms of repositioning the building uh, down towards number 19, just by the way, we don't own 19, that still is privately owned. And yes, we would like to purchase it one day. But uh, this is our largest playing area in the school. Uh, and to position the transportable anywhere down in that direction would take up student playing field area, which we value very much. By positioning it where we've actually asked for it to be positioned, um, it actually leaves that field area for play for the children to be able to have. Um, I guess uh, in, in terms of location, um, if you actually look at our site plan, you can see, like if you look at our whole site, uh, it is very tight. And as far as uh, both Tim and I can see, that is the only serious location that we can actually put it. Um, yeah. That's probably about as much as I need to say. Would you like to add anything to that, Tim? Uh, yeah, just the history of these, that they're coming off an existing school that's had them for 10 years on their site. So that class is temporary rather than uh, a solid build. Um, obviously the school would love to have a solid build, but um, costs and factors drive these things. They've got to get their numbers back up to where they they're registered to have. We're not asking for more numbers. We're just trying to get uh, more flexible learning spaces in the school so they can uh, uh, become a better school, I suppose, uh, which is better for the neighbourhood. That's right. You need to generate. You need to generate any of the other issues of amenity, landscaping, colour of materials, or the ramp. Do you want to clarify any of that, Tim or um, Pete? I can do. In terms of the colour, the building is, it is a creamy colour. It is a creamy colour and we also have, I mean, our building is cream brick. So it does kind of match in terms of that colour. Directly opposite us over the other side of Mora Avenue, there's, there's cream 
um, bedding that's built right on the footpath, so it actually does match with what's there as well. Uh, in terms of the ramp, um, that uh, is allows the best access for the students, I guess. Um, uh, we were looking for a straight run into the undercover. Hmm. What was that, Tim? The ramp, I think we were, the aim was for a straight run to undercover. Okay. Um, There's actually a, a large undercover area there, an external one, and so they can walk out from the undercover and straight up the ramp. And yes, it is a ramp because it needs to be for um, wheelchair access. Yep. Okay. Right. So you, you're both comfortable in, in uh, leaving it there in terms of your comments? Okay. I think so, yeah. Members, are there any questions of either Tim or Peter? Uh, yeah, Rowan here. I've got yep. uh, a couple of questions. Um, the, uh, the ramp itself, uh, could you just confirm that whether you're violently opposed as opposed uh, to the redirection of that, so it was parallel and then cut back in? I mean, that's, uh, that would actually reduce the, the actual impact. And also, I'd probably ask the question of the colour. Are you, uh, are you opposed to more of a, uh, a darker recessive colour? So that would uh, recess back into the, it, uh, as a sh sort of a shadow colour? Uh, the colour would add considerable cost to this project. As you, as you know, it's an existing building coming from an existing school. Okay, uh, so, so that's an existing ATCO. Uh, uh, transport or school transport or, yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. The actual photo of it is included in. Yeah, I thought that looked rather realistic. We we can paint it, but it could most likely peel and look terrible within years. Yeah. So the ramp. I'm not opposed to it. Um, yep. That was a Peter request. <laughs> yeah. Look, if if that's if that's what it takes. Um, so I suppose we'd just run the ramp along the front, the veranda and then work a footpath across from there. Thank you. Any other questions of Peter or Tim? No? Okay. Thank you. Now, Peter and Tim will get into our, and, and uh, Peter and Tim, of two Peters, will now commence our discussion of the merits of the application. So thank you for your presentations. Uh, Members, are there any questions of Susan as the writer of the report? Any points of clarification from Susan? Uh, one, one from me. I just want to confirm uh, my understanding is right that the green playing oval is actually the school's oval uh, or school grounds in its own right. It's not, it's not a facility that, I mean, residents might have been a beneficiary of the school there and having a green area, but it belongs to the school. Uh, that's through the chair, yes, I can confirm that the oval does belong to the, to the school grounds. Thank you. Any other questions of Susan? No? Okay, who'd like to uh, commence discussion of the, of the, their uh, point of view? Well, consider it, David, would you like to go first? Yeah, happy to. Um, look, uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to kick off. It's, I appreciate that, that Don, in these uh, virtual times. Um, I often, uh, often get a bit troubled by uh, applications like this, and particularly representations like this, where it talks about, communities talk about the perceived ownership of private open space. As uh, Ruan asked uh, Susan then, this isn't private open space or public open space, I should say. It's not public open space, it's the school space. And as Tim and Peter articulated, they positioned this uh, transportable as a way to continue to deliver the services of the community, of the school, as well as a way to minimise the impact on what is the uh, school's land which is then starting to ensure that the oval and the uh, play area is maintained. I appreciate the uh, representers' uh, comments and 
I'm sure there's uh, a perceived level of ownership of that, um, of that open space, but ultimately it is the school's land. If we are to assess this against the development plan, um, I see no, no reasons why this application does not meet the provisions of the development plan, and I'd be very happy to support it in, in its totality and as it is prepared uh, in the application. Now, given that this is all rather awkward because we're not sitting around the table, I'm just going to nominate the next speaker as we go down the list. Okay, members? Rob, do you want to add any comments? Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr Chairman. I think um, just a couple of things. Um, I guess, you know, having um, had regard to the representative's suggestion around, around relocating the building, I guess we've heard the, the school's response, but I guess the other point to make there is then you've got a building that sits closer to Bayville Street, Ballville Street, sorry, and then it's directly in front of another dwelling with, with the same arguments, I guess, you could apply in that regard. I guess in this case, the building is positioned alongside the school. Um, and and certainly from uh, Mora Avenue, you've only got dwellings that, fat, that, that, that are side on to Moore Avenue as opposed to addressing Moore Avenue. So the, the visibility from Moore Avenue is quite limited and it is generously set back from uh, Boreville Street. I do acknowledge and accept the representative's um, suggestion that we aren't approving a temporary building, um, even though that might be what the school wants to, um, well, ideally the school wants to redevelop the whole site when that occurs and how long the building will be there for, who knows. Um, so I think we need to acknowledge that. Um, I think for the reasons that David suggested and because of the setback from uh, Borville Street, in, in my opinion, a fairly limited locality, I'd, I'm comfortable with the application. I do believe there could have been more done with the landscaping um, and perhaps we can put that to the, the applicant um, is to see whether or not they can, they can provide some more screening, which I think for the representatives' benefit would probably address their concerns if you had better landscaping proposed and it couldn't be seen from their, from their property. Um, so I think that's the only, um, uh, I guess, comment I'll make, uh, whether there's the opportunity to provide some more landscaping to address the concerns. I don't have an issue with the stairwell coming off the site. I think, in my opinion, it's a fairly minor element of the overall Design. I don't think visually that's going to have too much of an correct too much of an issue. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, Ruan, do you want to go next, please? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, look, uh, I think uh, the other members have uh, covered quite a few of my points that I was going to raise anyway. But this is uh, effectively a, a school that's got a what I'll call a right for reasonable expansion, and I therefore really don't see this as a major uh, expansion of the school. So it's actually quite minor, uh, it, uh, temporary in nature. The, the only thing I'd probably uh, suggest is that we uh, think about the uh, duration of a temporary land use, uh, and that sh therefore should have some limitation to that period. Doesn't mean it can't be extended in the future. It just means that everyone knows that there's an end date by which you know, something uh, either gets extended or, or changed. Well, let me clarify this with Susan. This application is for transportable classrooms. Yep. Not, I don't believe it's for a temporary hmm. building. So they might be transportable, but this is an ongoing consent if it's granted. Yeah. And, okay. and in terms yeah. of landscaping, Rob and others, there is a reserve matter dealing with landscaping. Oh details and the like. But Susan, can you, do you want to chip in any comment regarding either landscaping or the permanency of the buildings? Uh, through the Chair, so the, the, um, the applicant has advised that they are of a temporary nature until the school at some point in the future wishes to, to expand. So there's, no, there's been no date in terms of what that temporary nature is. So I don't know what um, time frame they're proposing. Um, From our point of view, it's an ongoing, uh, ongoing building correct. that can remain there for as long as it likes until the school itself plans something different. 
Is that, that is correct. Yeah, yeah, that's my understanding. Um, yeah. Until such time that the school wishes to expand um, in, in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah. In so, regards to the land, sorry. Uh, just to clarify on that. So essentially the application, just so I'm clear, the application is actually for a permanent land use. It's just the building of its nature yeah. uh, is actually a transportable. So. Yeah. That's how I've read the application. Yeah, thank you. That's actually clarified. Okay, Susan, yeah. can I cut you short? No, that's right. And then in regards to the landscaping condition, that, yep. um, that was uh, a condition to obtain a, an updated landscaping plan from the applicant because the comment made back to council in response to the representation was that a tree could, a tree could be planted where, that, where there is the gap, but that hasn't been shown on any, any formal plan. So the landscaping, sorry, the reserve matter is to get an updated landscaping plan. But in dealing with the landscaping, rather than just dealing with where the tree has been planted, it could take account more of the representatives' concerns about landscaping generally. Is that fair or not? Uh, through the chair, so that, that could be, but the condition would have to be amended, so the reserve matter would have to be amended to include additional plantings. Right, okay. Well, we can deal with that in our discussions between the panel members. Robert, you want to make any comment? Oh, sorry, Ruan, has that, did I? That, that's great, no, that's fine. Okay. Robert, do you want to uh, make uh, comments? Yeah, look, I think it's been covered by all the other members. Um, there was a couple of issues I had that there, there was a lot of a couple of car parks, but then I realised that um, they still have more car parks than the minimum requirement. <clears throat> so I don't see that as a problem. And I think the, um, the building is consistent the other buildings in its built form with the colour, etc. So I'm supportive of the application. Okay. Right. Members, no one has spoken against this matter, but there has been inference that members might want to consider tightening or revising a condition or reserve matter. Now, can I seek clarification on that point? Oh, I can, I'm happy to give you my view. I think the reserve matter as it stands actually is uh, sufficient in that it's asking for a revised landscaping plan to deal with to the satisfaction of council. Uh, I think that covers it really. I think the application itself, um, you know, merits the approval. Um, I really can't see, you know, uh, okay. any main, main, major issue with it. Is anyone else here or members wishing to make any amendment to the reserve matters or conditions? Uh, uh, Mr Chairman, look, I, I agree with, what, with Ruan's comments. I think the reserve matter is certainly uh, worded broadly enough to enable some negotiation between the school and the council. I think that where Sue was coming from was that I think that the intent behind that reserve matter was just to accommodate that, that tree along Orville Street. I guess my only comment is it's a clean trunk tree, so it, it, it won't, it'll soften the visual impact, uh, but, it, but it will certainly provide through views to the, to the, to the uh, transportable. So I guess I would just encourage the school and the council to potentially negotiate something a little bit more substantial to provide a greater level of screening for the, uh, the representatives benefit. But in terms of the wording, I think it's broad enough to enable that to occur. Right. Yes, yeah, that's true. Yep. Condition. Okay. And Darren is is comfortable with that. As a council, they can proceed on that basis. Uh, so, members, no one has spoken against it, and it seems as if everyone is comfortable with the reserved matter and the conditions. So, for the benefit of the meeting, I I'll, I'll recall that the meet that the meeting has given approval to this proposal in line with its recommendation. Okay. Oh, yeah, great. Okay, so Peter, Tim and Peter, the panel has agreed to give consent to this matter and uh, the next, the, you'll just receive correspondence and the like from council in due course reg regarding that decision, okay? Thanks for your time. Members, let's move to item 6.2. It's for 43 Carter Street, Thorngate. It's for the demolition of an existing building and of four 
a four-storey residential flat building comprising six dwellings with associated car parking, fencing and landscape. Now, in terms of representatives, we have John, Ben and Brian. So welcome to each of you. And then we have uh, Phil Brunning responding on behalf of the applicant. And I take it you're all there. So, uh, John, I've got you listed first. Uh, just bear with me for a minute, John. Is there no visual? No, unfortunately, okay. So, so John, please outline your your uh, concerns and issues, and you have five minutes, please. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not able to hear that at the moment. Yeah, neither can I, Chair. It's breaking John, up. we're having trouble hearing you. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. Uh, is it still bad? It's slightly better. Try again. Okay. Um, so, um, the Oh, hold on, sorry, John. That that's not some coming through particularly clearly. If your phone is on Wi-Fi, if you could move closer to your modem, that should assist. Or if you're on three G or four G, if you can move close to a window or into a backyard or something like that, that should assist. I think it's better if you help me out and you carry on. Bring on the next one, Did you hear me? That, that came through slightly more clearly, but it's still quite muffled. Could you try again in just a moment? I, I, I suggested that the problem that you press on. I see. Okay. Thank you, John. All right. So, Don, John suggested that we move to the next representative. Okay. You'll try to All right. Okay. Ben. Ben. Let me just get Ben on. Sorry. There we are. Hi, Ben. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hi, Ben. Would you like to go first while John sorts his equipment out, so to speak? <laughs> yeah, that that's fine. I, I feel um, feel like I should go next door and ask him to come around, but sorry, <laughs> distancing aside, that may uh, be why I'm here virtually. <laughs> uh, look, thank you again for the chance to uh, to represent on this matter. I'm not going to go on about the comments that I've submitted in writing. I assume that you know the the panels looked at that. Uh, they're primarily just about mainly about the the detraction from the residential amenity that we have here. Uh, I'm at number 48 Carter Street in the Heritage Conservation Zone. And, and, and a construction in a building like this really takes away from that, that developed amenity in our street, um, you know, and, and, and what the street currently looks like. Probably what I want to bring to the, the panel's attention today is just some further concerns about safety around this type of development. Um, I have three small children uh, who go to, to local schools. And uh, back in February, our oldest child was hit by a car on Carter Street in the morning before a school run. And, you know, she's okay, by the way. Um, but you can imagine that an event like that was pretty traumatic. And in the mornings, around that eight o'clock time period, there's an incredible amount of traffic on, on Carter Street, you know, both going to, you know, cutting through from Main North Road to Prospect Road, going through to Blackfriars and, and people also leaving the area to go to their own work and whatnot. So a, a, a development like this, you know, with four stories, six units, you can assume that there's going to be, uh, you know, extra, extra pressures on the infrastructure street-wise with extra cars. We already have a current parking review for the street, you know, under consideration by council it is, as it is because we have parking problems. There's been previous presentations to council about closing off you know, Carter Street at Thorngate Street. So being that this development has no access to Main North Road or any other place 
for you know residents to to enter and leave the property you're going to add all that pressure directly onto carter street so i worry both for my children you know that that increased pressure on the road is a danger to them there's another young family that lives next door to number 43 who also goes to north adelaide primary with my kids you know these types of things have other consequences beyond you know the residential amenity and character of the street that i mentioned in my written comments you know i think that Again, the traffic is a consideration. It's pressure on the roads. It's pressure on the street. I think that this is a great opportunity, though, for the the panel to really think about what the vision for our community is. You know, these types of developments have become very common as people seek to, you know, maximize their property, which I don't have a problem with as such. You know, you can see that on Churchill Road and other other areas in the council. However, this isn't a, a development directly on a main road where. It, take that extra pressure, if you will, on, on the community, whether it's through traffic or pedestrian activity or what have you. So if you allow that, that mission creep, so to speak, from Main North Road and that business corridor to keep going further and further into Carter Street, ultimately it will not only change the character of the street that we live on, but it has other impacts, as I said, to the community through safety. Those are my main points. Um, I'm conscious of time as always, so I'll just thank you again for the chance to represent and um, for listening to uh, my comments about this. Thanks, Ben. Members, are there any questions of Ben? No. No? Okay. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Brian, are you there? Brian, yeah. Hello, Brian. Yes, hello. Can people hear me as I speak? Very yep. clear. Oh, good. So I'll start then? Yep, please. Okay. Um, my comments uh, largely follow Ben's in that my main concern is in terms of safety. Um, I, I understand that the essential character of the zoning in these areas is that most of the streets are zoned residential and then you have these corridors down the main road where you allow more commercial developments. But the problem with Carter Street is that it is at a very acute angle to Main North Road, which means that if you come out of the property for which the development is proposed, you are actually at opposite there that it is the eighth, number eight residential house going back east towards Main North Road. So whilst the intention of the zoning is that you have these uh, developments in the corridor next to the main north road or the main roads. Uh, in fact, in this case, it is um, well and truly into the residential area of the street. And uh, that's compounded by the fact that this particular property has no access to main north road. So all comings and goings have to come through Carter Street. Already we've got the, the danger of the access for the fast food outlet of the OTR and you're going to compound this with uh, if you've got six apartments you can reasonably expect that on average there'd be probably one and a half cars for those apartments you've now got you know nine ten cars uh, coming and going every day alongside the access to the OTR and you can see why Ben's concern with the the, the safety to pedestrians, children that are coming back and forth to the schools, to the OTR, people walk down there to get their bread and milk in the morning. And so um, that's that's my number one concern. I also have a, the concerns for the for the uh, the nature, the just the 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 nature of the um character of the of a development like this especially set against the, all those houses on opposite the street are zoned um, <coughs> with a historical uh, component to them so it's just completely out of character um, there is there's also a concern with the parking the increased parking which which the council has already been stymied trying to find a solution for the you know the high number of parking problems on Carter Street. And the last thing I'll add is that in a development as big as this, a four-storey apartment, during the construction phase, 
again, you don't have any access to the main north road. So during the construction phase, where you've got really heavy equipment because you're building a four-storey building and you're going to have excavators and cranes and stuff coming in and out, those safety concerns will even be uh, more magnified. So that's uh, where I stand. You can see that there's already been a child knocked down two or three houses to the main north road side of this development. Uh, I just don't think it's a good idea to have uh, this kind of development so far into the, not zone, but to the real um, um, spirit of the law sort of residential area. Anyway, so that's, the, I, I put those arguments probably <laughs> more clearly in my writing. So they're, they're what I wanted to address today. Thank you, Brian. That was, that was very clear. No, thank you. Uh, members, any questions of Brian? No? <coughs> Thanks, Brian. John, are you there again? Hello, John. You're still not any clearer. Uh, forget it. No. So, did he say forget it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we do have we do have your written representation, uh, so John. So we'll we'll rely on that. Okay. Um, so, members, any questions before we start off in terms of uh, Scott or Darren in terms of the points in the report? Oh, sorry, Phil, I've cut you short. Phil Brunning, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Don. Sorry, Phil. Now, very briefly, sorry for me, Phil, is, is Scott and Chris joining you in the response? I'm just observing because the YouTube link is not working, so they're, they're just um, um, lurking in the background. Perfect. No, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Thank you, Don, for the opportunity to respond. I might just do so uh, in relation to the uh, traffic safety issue. And look, my heart goes out to, uh, to Ben uh, and his daughter. Um, it's a very regrettable situation, but with respect, I don't think that could be attributed to this particular development, which it has been reviewed by uh, an expert traffic engineer. Um, and it's clear from that analysis, uh, the, any additional traffic arising from the development will be within the capacity of the road network. Um, I understand that's also been reviewed by uh, Council's traffic engineer. So on that, on that point, uh, I'd suggest that um, we're, we're sound. Uh, on the car parking issue, likewise, that, that has been an out, analysed by both our traffic engineer and Council's and considered to be acceptable. Um, on the zoning uh, boundary alignment, it is somewhat unusual, I, I accept that. Um, and I think it was suggested that possibly it was an anomaly, um, but not so. I think when you have regard to the, uh, the pattern of land tenure in the locality, you can see that the, the zone boundary has been aligned with some, some conscious purpose. Um, invariably, there will be uh, an edge between two differing zones, and this is one of those situations. Um, and I guess the, the policies in the development plan, as I read them, seek to manage that interface uh, with appropriate built form. Um, and the development plan provides uh, a very useful and effective uh, building envelope uh, figure uh, to have regard to. And, and as I've outlined in my submission and shown on the proposal plans, um, our proposal is substantively within the uh, building envelope. Um, I think it's also important to note that the, the building uh, form uh, displays a strong podium element uh, at the lower levels, with the upper two levels set back considerably from the street, um, 10 and 12.5 metres respectively, which in a context such as this is a very generous uh, setback. And I think that's uh, borne out when one has regard to the 3D visualisations that's been prepared. Um, this is a proposal which, in my view, is well considered and of a high uh, architectural uh, quality. Um, and I believe that's been acknowledged by Council's uh, heritage and urban design experts who have provided their recommendations uh, to Council's uh, planning staff. Um, there has been extensive pre lodgement consultation with, with Council staff uh, and many of the, adjust, uh, the comments have, have, have 
found their way into the proposal plans uh, through amendments, uh, which are in the plans that are before you tonight. Um, I think it's also important to note that this site does solely have a residential address uh, to, uh, to Carter Street, uh, and it does so in a, in a manner which is quite atypical of this form of development, as you would ordinarily see, uh, I think there's been comparison with Churchill Road. Unlike developments along Churchill Road, we have a situation where we have a ground level dwelling uh, with habitable rooms uh, and um, a front garden, if you will, uh, to the street. Um, the driveway uh, to the car parking area to the rear occupies a very minimal proportion of that, um, that, uh, that space. And, and again, combined with not only this, uh, the, the progressive front setbacks, but also the progressive side back setbacks in the, the, the west, we have a building uh, form that retreats considerably to the rear of the site. Um, in respect to the adjacency to the historic conservation zone, uh, as I've outlined in my, my letter of 3 March and, and my earlier uh, submission, um, I believe it has no material effect on, on the character of this street. It is still uh, the northern side of Carter Street. It is very clearly uh, an, a, a series of intact, relatively intact uh, historic uh, buildings, um, cottages, uh, villas and the like. Um, the presence of a building which is different on the southern side of Carter Street, a relatively wide street, in my view, will have, will have no impact. Um, you don't view the two in the same view uh, on, my, on my submission. Um, there is suitable separation between the two, between the two forms of development. Um, in terms of the car parking, I think I've dealt with that. Um, the, oh, the, I, th I think the other thing to note is because we have a relatively uh, uh, we have a narrow uh, driveway entrance, um, we maximise our on-street car parking uh, and our driveway entrance into the development is on the western side of our property, uh, furthest removed from the driveway associated with the on-the-run uh, um, petrol station. Um, that's probably about as much as I need to say, um, other than to reiterate that um, this is a proposal that's been worked up over, over, um, over a number of months. Um, the architects have um, considered this at length. It's a highly resolved piece of architecture, which I think will be um, um, a very good uh, benchmark for future uh, light developments in this locality. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Members, any questions of Bill? Uh, through the chair, I've got a couple, if I may. Oh, yep, go ahead. G'day, Phil. Um, just a couple of uh, questions. The um, adjoining service station, I, I note that um, there's an acoustic wall, or it appears to be an acoustic wall along that service lane, which adjoins the servo and, and the subject site. And um, I do note the Scott's report, which talks about um, the minister's spec um, being called up to deal with uh, uh, noise impacts, given that the site's in the noise and air emissions overlay. I guess my, my, my understanding, and i um, happy, happy to stand corrected with some of this, but uh, the minister's spec primarily deals with the um, uh, road and traffic noise rather than um, the noise generated by an adjoining land use. So in the case of this, in, in this case being the service station. Um, and I guess my question relates to the fact that I'm assuming that that acoustic fence uh, was installed uh, uh, with, with a single storey building in mind. Whereas here we've got a four storey building with, with um, I think bedrooms from memory um, along that, along that, along that, uh, that uh, wall which, which abuts or fronts onto that service station. Now, I also, I'm assuming also we, we're dealing with a 24 hour survey, although I, I, admittedly I haven't, haven't checked that, so I'm happy to stand corrected. So I, I guess I'm just, long story short there, I'm just wondering whether there was regard given to the noise impacts specific, spe specifically from the servo, uh, take into account that um, we're talking about a four-storey building now as opposed to what was previously a single-storey building? Uh, certainly. Um, you're quite correct. The Minister's specification deals with road noise, uh, vehicles travelling along the road. Um, 
uh, and that's a fairly um, um, routine level of detail that's provided in these type of buildings and these this this type of location. Um, you're correct that uh, angled wall uh, along the boundary, along the western boundary of the on the run supermarket, uh, supermarket petrol station, um, is for acoustic purposes. Uh, and I was involved, uh, I guess, in, in that matter, uh, assisting my clients uh, making certain representations at the time. Uh, and it was done primarily to control the noise arising from uh, the drive-through facility. And as it's turned out, it's been highly effective uh, uh, response. Um, and we're confident that uh, given the angle at which it projects back into the site, it will uh, absorb, deflect, reflect uh, any noise arising um, and not have a, an impact on our, on our eastern facade. Um, bearing in mind that I guess uh, We've got limited window openings to the east. Um, there are window openings, um, but the primary aspect uh, of living areas in particular uh, is to the, either the north or the south. So yes, there is um, a potential, and I think it's prudent to consider this issue. Um, I note that on the run, uh, did not uh, make a representation in relation to this proposal as they were entitled to. Um, uh, somewhat surprised that they possibly didn't uh, just to uh, preserve their position, um, but they, they haven't. Um, I feel confident that sufficient um, protection is afforded within the building itself combined with this very effective angled acoustic wall um, and the increased level of um, uh, acoustic insulation that is required um, under the Minister's specification for road noise, it, it will kill two birds with one stone. So, Phil, just just to follow up on that on that very matter, noting now that you were involved in the adjoining land use uh, application, was was the was the consideration for noise primarily from the service lane, or 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 was there a potential impact of noise from the forecourt? It was it, it was the drive through. If you have a look, okay. at the, have a look at the form of the building. It's a very large control building, and it's yep. very substantial. Um, physical barrier in combination with the canopy itself. So, um, in fact, um, as I, I would expect that the noise environment on my client's property is actually improved as a consequence of the on-the-run on the development because it provides greater mass between um, the residential property uh, and, and Main North Road. Okay, thank you. And uh, just, just one more question. Um, mechanical plant locations, is there any, I, I couldn't see anything on the plans, and again, if I've missed it, um, please excuse me, but is there any intention or is there any understand, any ideas as to where the mechanical plant's going to go? Um, as I understand that uh, they're to be located within the, uh, the, the ground level parking area, um, there is, um, I guess, considerable area um, available for that. Um, there's some specific service uh, cabinets for various uh, pieces of building infrastructure. Um, but uh, as I understand it, uh, the uh, um, air conditioning plant is to be located in that, in that lower portion as opposed to being on the roof. Okay, thank you. No other questions, Chair. Okay, uh, any other member uh, have any questions for Phil? Not from me. No, okay. Well, uh, thanks, Phil. Oh, sorry, one question from me. In terms of the one apart, or one bedroom apartment where the bedroom hasn't got any uh, windows as such, but a skylight, is that to be taken as a ventilating skylight or what? What's uh, the intent there? Well, I think by necessity, it, it has to be a ventil ventilated skylight. Um, Look, that's uh, it's uh, regrettable in, in, to some extent, but um, uh, I guess in the whole scheme of things, a relatively small deficiency. Um, uh, Jenny, in her um, uh, review, has picked up on this. Um, uh, I think with a ventilated skylight, you can achieve the necessary air movement. Uh, it's not optimal, I accept, um, but satisfactory nonetheless. Is the skylight diagrammatic, or is, will it actually be that length? In width? Um, well, I think it will. Well, it's shown not only on the uh, ground floor plan, but if you have a look at level one, you can see it um, yeah. um, uh, yeah. on, on the roof, roof level yeah. above. 
Um, so as yeah, I, so, it's, yeah. like, it's more probably more like a sky window as yep. opposed to a, yep. a yeah. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, members will commence our discussion. Uh, Robin, would you like to go first? Any comments? Yeah, or sure. Um, so, look, uh, it probably is at odds with the character of Carter Street generally, but um, given its position towards uh, the on the run, um, I don't see that as an issue. Um, and I do actually like the design with, with the stepping back. It actually, uh, from the north, it actually looks like a two-storey um, uh, building. So I do uh, commend the, the design. Um, I'm not particularly happy with uh, that the issue that there's no on-site um, visitor parking. I, you know, I see that generally as a problem with other apartment buildings around Prospect. It, it, it seems to be something that's overlooked and um, and the the old stories are well there'll be plenty of parking in the street for them but it, it, it concerns me and, and that is an issue. Um, also with the uh, the tree removal with the White Cedar uh, replacement program council has recently uh, altered the um, the program, it was going to be a replaced program, but now it's, it's only when it's an absolute necessity, when, when, the, when the tree is, is in poor condition. So I would like that uh, perhaps to be um, uh, uh, an issue that's um, addressed before it's just ripped out. But... Um, I think that's a reserved uh, matter, isn't it, uh, Robin? Big pardon? I think that's a reserved matter, isn't it, or not? Uh, through the share. Yeah. Robin, in, indeed, in, in reflection of that recent change of council, a reserve matter has been recommended that essentially calls for the driveway to be relocated to retain that tree or a fresh assessment of that tree to occur. And if indeed it would fit the new criteria, then it may well follow that direction still. So there is, there is a reserve matter intended to respond to that change of council in relation to the program. Okay, good. Well, that's, that's one of the other issues. Um, apart from that, um, you know, the design, I, I'm quite happy with the design and um, it's just those couple of issues with visitor parking and, and the tree, but uh, that's all I've got lost. Okay, thanks Robin. Uh, Ruan, do you want to go next please? Uh, yeah, look, uh, uh, I, I tend to uh, think this is a, a really good example of uh, the development that we're trying to achieve in urban corridor zone. So I think uh, it does uh, it does a really, really good job of of uh, transitioning between, I guess, the existing and, and historical character of an area uh, to what the zone is calling for, which is, you know, these urban uh, corridors. So I think often in in these things, and I think the applicants, uh, planning consultant, uh, basically did infer this to them, uh, just in his uh, discussion that. It, it is a, it's the zoning, the policy that is seeking to achieve a densification of areas. And unfortunately, that that is what the zoning is trying to achieve. It's not actually trying to replicate uh, just low density housing. So what the requirements are is, uh, is about the transition of it. I think this application does a really, really good job of the stepping back uh, the podium design. It actually uses the material selection, I think, very well. And I really liked the vertical horizontal uh, patterning that you actually get out of the form design. I think that is actually the way it's become respectful to the both the existing character and what the future character might be of these urban corridor zones. I think, uh, I think in the application drawings, you can see where the future urban corridor zoning is, you can sort of see there's uh, going to be many more like that sort of scale of development happening in here at the time. So I think it's a, well, a well considered project, uh, design and ought to be uh, approved. Thanks, Ryan. Rob, do you want to go next, please? No problems. Um, if I can first, uh, Chair, just ask a few questions of Scott, if that's okay? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. No dramas. Uh, what have we got here? Sorry, I'm just trying to get my bearings again. Um, oh, Scott, um, in terms of the waste storage uh, um, area, um, and I, I know there's a condition, proposed condition four, I think, which talks about um, 
I think, additional area for uh, organics or, or, or um, yeah, green waste. Is that correct? I think 850 litre green waste bin from memory in the... Um, so I'm just trying to flick between the screens here. Uh, yeah, a minimum of 850 litres of recyclable waste um, capacity shall be provided within the waste storage area um, for use by occupants of the here and approved building. I guess my question is, are you suggest, I mean, do we know if the, if the storage area is large enough to accommodate that additional um, bin and function appropriately? Or are you suggesting that the, the area might need to be increased in size or what, just seeking some comments on that? Certainly, Rob, look, in, in terms of the current waste management methodology, that would involve one additional bin being placed into that area. Yeah. Uh, there clearly are other methodologies that could also be used, including an increased collection frequency beyond council mm -hmm. system or indeed a larger uh, mobile garbage bin size, so in the order of 360 litres, and that opportunity to minimise it was why I've recommended the condition to a volume rather than a number of bins because it allowed for multiple solutions to be addressed to fit within that space. And and just a follow up there, Scott. Um, and um, the the collection at the moment is is it anticipated that it will be it will be by council's waste collection service or a private waste contractor? So the current methodology proposed is indeed that they are shared bins, but nonetheless collected by council's curbside um, system. So there would be someone yep. in the corporation responsible for uh, delivering them to curbside, returning them to the storage area, um, and then there's mm -hmm. a wash down area in there with the intent of that same person being responsible for keeping them clean. Yep. Okay. No worries. Um, okay. So, but 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 you're comfortable that there's a there's, there's a solution to it, whichever way that ends up, either it be private waste contracted with increased frequency of collection to accommodate the capacity required or, or some other option. Indeed, particularly yep. with the storage area being placed at the front, if I was concerned that it wasn't resolvable within that space, I don't mm -hmm. think I'd recommend it, this outcome. Okay. Yeah, no, no, thank you for that. Um, the other question I, I had, and it was to do with the concerns uh, raised by the representatives regarding uh, traffic along Carter Street. And I think it comes back to the, the question around the, the, the lack of uh, visitor parking within the site itself. Um, there was a mention about, about the parking review for Carter Street. Do we have any information on, on that insofar as that, how that impact may be, sorry, how that assessment or review may be uh, exacerbated by this development in terms of on-street parking. Um, yeah, is there any, any, any thoughts on that or any information? I can't say that I'm particularly familiar with the current status of that review beyond an understanding that it's underway at present. Yeah. Uh, I think in that context, it would be difficult for me to, to speak to a, with precision about the relationship of the two. Yeah. Uh, certainly from the perspective of this building, the provision of parking in a stacked formation um, achieves the, the visitor parking requirement set out for residential development by the council-wide provision. Um, yeah. That, hence, is the, the basis for our assessment. Um, mm -hmm. But indeed, if, if our traffic engineers are working through a process of car parking and that concluded that timed parking solutions or others were required, mm -hmm. I presume be focused around peak periods of use, which are yep. on visitation periods for residential development. Yep. Okay. And and um, Phil made a comment that um, this one had been um, reviewed by your your council's traffic engineers. Um, is is that correct? So during the pre lodgement stages, and which, as Phil I think fairly says, were reasonably extensive, there were a number of people in landscape architects. Um, and the traffic engineers engaged to review at that stage. As I say, that the reason that the question of the tree and the access appears as a reserve matter is it changes in that space since that time. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And sorry, just another question on the on the parking is, and you, I think you may have um, just mentioned discussed this, but I, I think you broke up a little bit when you were talking about it. The stack uh, 
parking formation uh, on site uh, and noting that your report does make comment that the overall number of parking spaces exceeds that uh, um, contemplated by the development plan. Um, are you, um, is there a suggestion that the stacked car parking can accommodate um, visitors as well or be used for visitors? Uh, so indeed, Rob, the, the provision, and I'm trying to get the number in front of me, but I may be too slow, sorry, but, but without having okay. that number in front of me, there is a particular council-wide provision that indicates that where more than one parking space is required for a dwelling, it may be provided in a stacked formation. Yep. Um, it's described as that's um, perhaps horizontal in terms of on the ground or vertical. It simply says stacked parking is okay. Yep. Um, in terms of the, the relationship in between that provision and these others, we have a requirement that more than one space be provided for each of these apartments and there are, there are two spaces being provided in that stack formation so yep. I achieve those provisions. Yep so and, th and thanks for that and I did read the um, your report which talks about and refers to that council-wide provision. I guess my, my only question is has there been any discussion with the applicant or thought given to I mean how the visitor park if they were to be used to visitor sorry. parking. Sorry, um, if they were to be used for visitor parking, and, and I have no issues with that in, 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 in concept, I'm just thinking around in terms of, you know, you've got a roller door which blocks the access um, from Carter Street. So in terms of management of the site to enable visitors to access the, 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 stacked, the stacked car park at the back, has, have you, has there been any thought given to that and how that might work? In terms of the, the particular functionalities of a system as to whether it's an intercom or a swipe or something of that nature, no. Um, in early discussions there was, um, during those pre lodgement discussions, there was some indication that it would be some kind of technology of that nature, but, but in terms of precision, no. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, and um, Chair, I'll, I'll just give my, my brief comments then if that's okay and move on. Yep. Um, so I think uh, in terms of design, look, I, I, I agree with the other panel members. This is, this is, has been designed clearly with a lot of thought given to it. I think the transition from the staggered setback along Carter Streets is, I think it should be commendable. I think all is commendable. And also the stacked car parking arrangement, uh, the, the, the building does uh, seek to maximise the use of the site. And I don't think that is should be seen as a bad thing. It's, it's an efficient use of the site, which I think is, is, a good, is, a, is a good outcome. I think the issues that the representatives have raised, and Rowan has touched on this, is to do with the, the zoning, not, not to do with the application. So the application simply has been designed to meet the current zoning. Um, and and it, it's, it's beyond our, our, I guess, jurisdiction to, to go beyond what the development plan contemplates and what the zoning contemplates for the area. So I think in terms of design, um, I, I agree, uh, well, I, I probably disagree with the comment that, it, that the building is in character with the street. I don't agree with that. Um, I think it's not in character, um, but it is in it, it, it's, it's consistent with the desired character contemplated for the zone. And I think that's as far as we should be going in terms of assessing the application and the design and build form out um, proposed. So I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Happy with the, the comments provided by Scott in terms of the waste storage area. I did find it a little strange that the waste storage area was accessed via the lobby. Um, in terms of, I guess, I'm assuming odour will be managed by, by a ventilated room arrangement. Um, I, 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 thought, I thought that was a little, little odd, but um, I, I, I'm assuming that they'd want to manage that. Otherwise, they're going to have some issues with smell <laughs> through their foyer area. The visitor parking, um, yeah, I think, um, I think it, it, look, in the absence of any other evidence to suggest otherwise, I think um, the, and, and, and given that we have a traffic report and given that we have uh, at least preliminary review by tr Council's traffic engineers, I'm, comfortable with the parking arrangement. I did look at Carter Street because so I was worried that it would be a very narrow street and you'd have a bit of congestion, but it is a fairly wide street. 
Um, and unless there's anything to suggest otherwise um, in, in, a, in, a, in a, a parking study that council has performed, you know, I, I, I'm happy to be guided by council's traffic engineers on that matter. Um, the only other thing was landscaping uh, for me. And I guess I was interested to see what would happen with that tree along uh, in, Carter, in Carter Street, because I think there isn't much landscaping at all happening. It's a fairly, still a fairly bulky building with not a lot of landscaping. And that tree does um, provide quite a bit of, um, I guess, visual relief to the building or it can do if it stays. Yeah. Um, uh, so I guess that's my only comment. Otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with the application in its current form. Thanks, Rob. Uh, David, do you want to go next? Hey, uh, I'm not sure after Rob's, there's much really to talk about. Um, the only thing that I, I've, and I'm saying that uh, out of out of jest, Rob. Um, <laughs> I can't see your face because you've turned your screen off. But um, the only thing that I would like to say that perhaps hasn't already been said is is I do think the architect should be uh, uh, complimented. Um, this is a really tricky site, and taking taking the the representative's comments um, out of it in terms of the zoning. It is a tricky zone and this is a tricky site. I think what has been uh, designed here should be considered an exemplar for uh, urban infill and infill uh, projects within the City of Prospect. I think the balance of form, scale and materiality um, is, uh, is of an, a, a very high quality. I only hope that it is constructed and built as the 3D images to demonstrate. I, one, one point that perhaps hasn't been emphasised and I would like to emphasise is the treatment of the driveway. Um, you've, I think panel members have certainly heard me um, comment regarding the driveway frontages and frontages of sites as being completely absorbed by driveway access for the detriment to the overall streetscape. And I think the uh, treatment here is incredibly successful in terms of a single driveway access, single width driveway access, treatment of the uh, prioritising the foyer space on the ground plane, but then also treating it with a, an appropriate level of uh, amenity and activation onto the streetscape as well. So um, all in all, I'm very happy with this application and happy to support it as it is written. Thanks, David. Uh, my comments, and I'll be brief, um, I'm supportive of the application. I certainly agree with Rob's comment regarding the character, how it, the development fits in with the desired character, not necessarily existing character of the street. And I think he's right in what that's what we need to bear in mind. In terms of uh, visitor parking, I think this is one of those classic cases where the provision of numbers is right, but I just can't see visitors, given the configuration, actually getting on site. To, if, you're, if you're a first time visitor or even an occasional visitor, you're not necessarily going to, I think, use such indirect access to a visitor space, let alone a car decking uh, deck stuff. So I think the important part is here, it meets its provision, but I'm not sure you can actually force people visitors to use the, the numbers that are there. Uh, Scott, in terms of the waste collection, your con proposed condition number three talks about general recyclable and green organic waste shall be commingled. Now, is that reliant on what the existing system of collection is? And I'm just wondering if, if there's changes in time, do we need to state what that what the current system is as opposed to what might happen in the future. You've got a comment there? I see. Um, part of the reason for imposing the condition is that in a number of these high density developments that are intended to have these common systems, um, we have seen requests from individual residents or owners for individual bins but, um, and it has caused some occasional background confusion between our waste staff, our waste contractor who actually provide these bins uh, and ourselves needing to keep a response to these types of conditions. Yep. The intent of having the condition here is that it appears in section seven searches 
so the future owners are aware of it at the time of the search and also so that our other staff are aware immediately upon viewing this. So yeah. when you say co-mingled, you mean they share the bids rather right. than have individual bids? <laughs> oh, the term in terms of waste collection, in my mind, co-mingled, where it is you might have a bin that has recyclables in one half and something else in the other. I'm oh, that's sadly cool. aware that the terms are interchangeable, yeah. yeah. Okay, no one has spoken against the development, although there have been some comments regarding visitor parking and, uh, and the like. Uh, given the comments, unless someone wants to uh, speak up now, I think there is still a consensus about giving consent to this development. Is everyone comfortable? Am I reading the, the vibes right? That's correct. Right. Okay, yes. so from that point of view, and there's been no suggestion in terms of changes to the reserve matters or conditions. So I think the panel is saying that it's comfortable in granting consent as recommended to this development. So on that basis, uh, in terms of the representatives and Phil, this panel has agreed to give consent as recommended to this development. So thank you for your time and participation. Members, let's move to Item 6.3, which is a two-storey dwelling and detached garage. We have no reps. This is a cat one. Uh, so, members, any questions? On with this one. Uh, Susan. Uh, maybe there's a printer that one. Okay. I'm happy to support that too, Rowan. Okay, so there's two in support of it as as, as recommended. Uh, Robin, how do you feel about this development? Um, yeah, I'm happy to go along with the uh, professionals. Um, this is the Old Street Prospect one, this two-storey dwelling. Yep, uh, with a hammerhead at the back, yeah? Yep. yep. Well, personally, I don't really like the design uh, from the start at the front, but um, you know that's just my personal opinion. But I'm happy for it to go ahead. Okay, Rob, any comments you'd like to make? No, happy to move this printed uh, chair. Right. Well, I I can't add to that as either. So members uh, will will determine that that has been granted consent in accordance with the recommendation. Thanks, everyone. Right, item 6.4, 55 Vine Street Prospect, it's two two-storey detached dwellings. Okay, any questions of staff on this one? Up to that? Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Let's start from the other end. David, have you got any comments on this one? Uh, look, I, I don't. The only, I'm just, just mindful of um, the differences in uh, site level and, or actual floor level and just the retaining wall condition that that would uh, start, to, start to bring. Um, particularly between the two units and just the general height difference once a, uh, a, a property a boundary fence is, is placed between dwelling one and a dwelling two. But that was the only uh, thing that really raised my eye. Um, and I think how it's being treated is probably acceptable on the fact that it runs along that long boundary between the two isn't really going to create an amenity impact. Um, all in all, like it's, it, it satisfies the quantitative requirements of the development plan slightly over in terms of coverage, but all in all, happy to support it. Okay. Rob? 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm comfortable with the application in its current form. I, I did particularly like, um, too like that. The, the strategy of um, disguising the second role at all yeah. with, um, with a, uh, I guess, I'll call it like a fake window, and also the, the pillars in between the, 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 the role at all to break up the, the, the bulk of the building. Um, I think that works really well. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with the application in its current form. Thanks, Thanks, Rob. Ruan? Yeah, uh, like uh, the other members, I'm quite comfortable with, uh, with this application. I, I must say, I really did like the ground floor uh, internal layout, although that's got nothing to do with the, plan, the uh, detail of the planning, but I think they actually really did think uh, about the uh, amenity of the end users. So. Okay. Thanks. Robin? Uh, agree. Yes, I'm happy with it. Yep. Okay, and so am I. So I think we've got clear consensus on this one. Uh, no one is suggesting any changes to conditions and the like. So I'll take it that that's uh, supportive of what's recommended. So I'll, we'll determine that the panel is granted consent to this. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, item 6.7, oh, actually, is the deferred item for... 183 Main North Road, Nailsworth. It's regarding a variation to condition 13. Uh, any questions of staff? Nope. Nope. No. Members, who wants to go first? Okay. Rob, do you want to go? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Look, I um, I think I mean, short answer is well, my, my my view is I'm, I'm comfortable with the proposed variation. I think what sold it for me or convinced me the most was probably the uh, the advice from um, James Roder, um, and I think in particular his reference to the MFY report and the reference to or the justification for the car parking based upon the previous use, previous unlawful use, and the fact that this development will result in a net increase in parking, or sorry, a reduced amount of on-street parking when compared with the previous use, and that that is a legitimate and accepted um, approach to the assessment of this application. So look, I think, I think, with that in mind, I, I, I don't see any reason why, um, in, in my mind, we wouldn't support this application on those grounds alone. Okay, thanks, Rob. Uh, Ruan? Uh, I tend to agree with uh, Rob there. Uh, I really uh, think he's actually nailed uh, my sort of view on that. Okay. Thanks. And okay. I certainly, do, I, I certainly do remember it being quite a, a point of contention at the first time the application came through and there was quite a lot of discussion and even potentially um, on the feet discussion that was happening during the, the meeting regarding but I'm, I actually think the overall argument that has been put forward is an incredibly sound planning argument and I'm very happy to support it. Thanks David. Uh, Robin? Yes I'm happy to support it. Um, I wasn't um on the original panel when the first approval was given, but it, uh, it doesn't seem at odds with that, so I'm happy to support it. Uh, I'll add the same comments as you, Rob. Uh, okay, so again, we have reached consensus that this development should be varied in accordance with the recommendation. So thank you members on that. Um, right. Item eight, summary of state commission assessment panel decisions. Darren? Need to say anything about this or not? Uh, look, probably the only thing to say is that the, um, this is the application for Devonport Terrace. Um, Scott uh, attended the meeting online, uh, put all the council's view. Uh, we obviously don't know what was recommended to the minister, so recommendation from approval. Uh, we will probably assume that that's what the minister, but we can't be sure at this point. So. At some point in time, we'll be formally notified okay. and we'll bring back the outcome from that. Okay. Questions? Okay. Any questions of Darren? 
Nope. Okay. okay. Any other matters in terms of, well, how this meeting has gone, our first online meeting? Is everyone comfortable with how we're trying to deal with it or make, can make suggestions? Well, well, done. well done to all those that organised it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that's Scott more than anybody. And Darren. Okay. And Darren, if there's no, no, nothing else, Darren's got a point to make as well. Yeah, I guess members will know that we've still got the next meeting here in Papi. Um We don't know whether that will be here or we're assuming it'll be online again. Yeah. Um, just have to make that determination. Uh, but I hope that it will be online again. So. I'll let all the members know in advance, uh, probably around the time that the uh, agenda is, is sent out. And again, we'll be notifying community if it's electronic. Uh, so likely that we'll go down that path again, I would say. Thank you, Darren. Okay, members, I think we've dealt with all our matters. So thank you for your patience with me. I'm trying to deal with this online for the first time and uh, we'll Meet again on the 11th of May, hopefully. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you all. See you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.